Jefferson to lead that subject this evening. You know, we have people in the Tech and Coffee Hangout, which you can find out more information by going to techandcoffee.info. We've got Linux users. We've got Windows users. We've got Mac fanboys. Yeah, we got them all. But can you imagine what it would be like to have all three operating systems on one machine? It's called the Hackintosh. And tonight we're going to learn how to do it from an expert. His name is Chris Jenkins. But before we get to Chris, I want to welcome George. George is in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. How are you doing tonight, George? I'm doing fine, Bruce. I'm doing excellent. Uh, I'm here to, uh, to see how to make I've tried a Hackintosh before, never really got it to work right. Chris is the man to go to. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm game. If, 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 we, if he can get me to do it, I think anybody could do it. Also joining us, giving us some great technical advice, is Yvonne. Yvonne's in, uh, what would you say, north central Florida somewhere there. How are you doing tonight, Yvonne? I'm doing great. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks for having me, Chris. I great. look We're forward to learning how to do this. Outstanding. Well, we're glad to have everybody here. So Chris Jenkins is going to be our expert tonight. I'm going to go ahead and turn over the rest of the uh, hang on on air to Chris. Chris, we're glad to have you. Thanks so much for putting this together. Can't wait to hear what you've got to share with us tonight. Yeah, excellent, guys. I mean, I've been looking forward to this all week. I mean, uh, I started this last Sunday, and uh, ever since then, I mean, I've just been waiting for it to, uh, to kind of just get here. And finally, it's here, and I'm, I'm ready to go. All right, so um, without any further ado, um, I have a nice little keynote here because, uh, you know, what's a Hackintosh without the Tosh at the end, you know, the, the Macintosh. So um, before we get started, I'd just like to go ahead and just uh, display a few things before, we, you know, we get into it. Uh, basically what we're looking at here is I'm just going to share a few things from, from my desktop here um, just so you all know that I am using a Hackintosh. So... Down here, you do see that the uh, I, I do have the Mac OS dock, you know, pretty standard uh, Mac OS uh, menu up here. And just so you know that I'm actually using a Macintosh, here it is. You can't find this on Windows. Mac OS X version 10.7.4. These are my specs right here. We'll get into that later. But uh, let's go ahead and just dive right into it. What do you say, guys? Y'all ready? Uh, sounds ready. like a plan. Let's Excellent. do it. All right, so um, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and launch this keynote. First of all, welcome. Um, thanks for joining us for the first ever, first ever, right, live hangout from Tech & Coffee. This is our, uh, our icon down here, which is really nice because it represents not only the tech, but the copy too. <laughs> um, so th this is the overall view of, of what we're looking at as far as, you know, staff and host and et cetera. Um, thanks, thanks, guys, a lot for everything that you've done. You know, kind of, to kind of get this going. Um, you know, of course, my name is uh, Christopher Jenkins, um, and uh, I have my co-host here, Bruce Turner. Excellent, excellent radio voice. And uh, I do have my technical director here as well, George Dosher. He's been uh, contemplating a few things and throwing a few things around, and we finally got everything up and running. So, excellent job, George. Thank you. And. Uh, Yvonne, what would I do without you on this? I mean, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a good thing whenever I can get all my grammatical errors fixed, and uh, I definitely thank you for that. And uh, Bart Edinger, he's, he's not with us right now, but uh, he made an awesome image. Um, I think I posted that earlier this week, and it looks very professional, looks very awesome. Um, I don't have the quiet audience in here, but uh, all the audience is down below, basically just uh, myself, George, Yvonne, and uh, Bruce, thanks a lot, guys. All right. So uh, without any further ado, we're just going to go ahead and uh, dive right into it. Triple booting your Hackintosh. All right. So as of right now, I'm just going to go ahead and, and focus the camera on me, so that way we can kind of, uh, you know, you know, get some one-on-one -on -one time with this here. So um, basically, what we're going to learn here is we're going to learn not only how to install Mac OS X 10.7 on a computer. We're also going to be able to learn how to install Windows 7 and a Debian Linux all on one computer. Now, you know, for those of you who don't really have a big hard drive, this may not be for you. And um, also, there are various types of hardware that you do, do need for this. Um, I just happen to be one of the lucky ones that have an I, I, you know, processor. I have an i7 processor. Um, and uh, 
But yeah, I mean, let's let's, let's go ahead and, and dive right into it here. All right, so um, the distribution that we're using tonight is a distribution that I never heard of until here about a month ago. And when I started using it, 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 it finally installed, and I'm like, man, this is awesome. And so ever since then, I've just been using this, this, this whole, uh, you know, IATCOS uh, distribution of, of Mac OS X. Basically what it is, is um, the one I use is IATCOS L2, which is Mac OS X 10.7.2. Um, but the good thing about that is, is that it's fully upgradable to 10.7.4, no problem. Um, I only had one minor glitch with it, and the only thing it was was I just had to reinstall my video driver. A after I did that, it was running flawless. For those of you who are interested in running Mac OS X on your PC, you know, like I was saying before, we definitely need to go ahead and get you hooked up with some of those those uh, kernel extensions that uh, that Mac OS X. Um, does require. In that case, you might want to go ahead and head up to kext.com. I'll go ahead and put that here in the uh, in, in the chat menu here. Let me just say. All right. Um, now, do keep in mind if you can't really see the chat menu at this moment, um, we will have this whole uh, uh, keynote available. And what I'll do is I'll actually send this uh, presentation to my Windows buddies. So that way they can have a, a presentation as well. So we'll have uh, not only, you know, the the Mac version, but we'll also have the Windows version available to everybody. All right. So um, next thing you want to do is you want to head up to uh, Tony Mac X86. Right. So um, basically, what that is is it's the general go-to place for the Hackintosh software. You know, from here you can actually uh, see what, what kind of uh, software and hardware that you need to kind of run everything on your computer. And I did post that link right there in the chat as well. You know, again, it's, it's going to be on the uh, PowerPoint, so we'll be good there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, whenever we're, uh, you know, getting ready to, you know, to do this, I mean, just head up to, to Tony Mac X86 first to make sure that your, all your hardware is compatible. Um, personally, um, the only thing I had to do really was to buy a different uh, USB Wi-Fi dongle for my computer. After that, everything was good to go. I mean, uh, flawless. The only thing I had a little bit of trouble with was the video card, which, you know, finding drivers is hard. It's even harder on Mac OS, if you can imagine that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, once you go up to the site, you're going to have people that have dealt firsthand with, this, with these devices, right? And, you know, these are people that have troubleshooted, you know, troubleshot, troubleshooted, right? I don't know. Um, for days, you know, days, weeks, months. And they have finally gotten a, a final product, and they've posted their experiences. So that's definitely a, a, a good resource to have whenever you're, you're building these things. During this presentation, you will be uh, exposed to installing operating systems, reinstalling them, and reinstalling them again as well as installing third-party bootloaders. That sounds pretty serious, right? It gets kind of nasty sometimes. So I'm not going to lie. It, it took me about two weeks to figure out what, what I was doing and how to do it, to be honest. Um, the first thing we need, though, um, besides the hardware itself, is going to be the uh, IATCOS uh, DMG. Um, a DMG is it's kind of like an ISO, if you're familiar with that term. Um, it's basically like an image that you can... Uh, it's, it's like a a giant zip file that you can put onto a disk pretty much. So um, you actually need the IATCOS DMG. Okay, so I know some of you are thinking, hold on a second here, well, what, what's going on? You know, I don't know what a DMG is, or, you know, I know what a DMG is, and it's, it's a mech, you know, type thing. You're right, and we'll get into that later. Um, again, you know, as I was stating before, various types of the uh, – Parts of the, of the operating system, uh, the Mac OS operating system, will be available from uh, kext.com, K-E-X-T-S.com. Um, I, however, will not provide support for, for you know those types of things. However, if you have the exact same setup as I do, I'll be more than happy to share those those drivers with you for sure. Um, but do keep in mind, I want to stress this throughout the whole presentation. If you are using a current Mac, if, if you have Mac, if you have an Apple on your on your screen right now, if you have an Apple embedded like on the icon, you know, 
do not use this. Do do not do not use this. Okay, do not use this if you're using a Mac. This this DMG is only only for x86 processors and and uh, architectures. So basic PC setups, right? Okay. I just want to stress that because if you do and, and you know and you know decide to install this. It's not going to be a good thing because you're probably just going to end up having to restore your system and lose all your data, and I don't want that to happen to you. All right, so uh, basically we're on, on to what do I need now? Okay, so we were ta already talking about the IATCOS DMG file, and you're thinking, okay, well, I'm on Windows. What am I going to do? All right, so um, we do have this, uh, this piece of software called TransMac, T-R-A-N-S-M-A-C. And that's available for Windows users that will allow you to burn a DMG file to an actual DVD writable or rewritable. And I'll go ahead and post that in there in the chat as well. All right, that's there. Um, so something else that you might find optional because it's, it's a little bit easier to store you know, on a flash drive is the actual Linux distribution itself. Um, you know, Linux is a very small, compact type uh, operating system, and it's really easy to store on any, any type of thing. But you know, I mean, CDs get scratched, you know, DVDs get scratched, and it's it's always a good thing to kind of uh, have a backup. And it's you know, USBs. I mean, they're really hard to break unless you intentionally you know decide to break them. You know, um, but uh, the partial compatibility list to to all of the hardware that uh, that we were talking about just a few minutes ago. That, that's available at that TonyMacX86.com website I was talking about. So from there, um, we'll be good to go for, for the uh, hardware compatibility. As I was explaining before, you know, a DMG, you know, we need TransMac, and we definitely need to, you know, get that, go ahead and get that burnt to a CD. Um, basically, all we need is a CD or a, a flash drive of each of the operating systems as of right now. We're going to need you know, the Windows OS on, on a CD, a DVD, or a DVD RW, we're going to need Ubuntu on either a flash drive or um, a DVD or DVD RW, and we're also going to need a uh, this IATCOS L2 I was talking about. Um, we're also going to need that on a DVD or DVD RW as well. So uh, just to kind of talk about my build a little bit, I actually have a, uh, a manufactured computer, if you can believe that. It's my actually first manufactured computer since about 2000 and I want to say 2003, 2004. Um, but right now I have a Dell XPS 9000. It's a uh, Dell 435T is the internal name of it. Um, I have a Rosewill RNX N15UBE Wi-Fi card. All right, so I just woke up today and I checked my mail on Newegg. And this specific Wi-Fi card is going for nine dollars. Nine dollars. Of course, that's without shipping. Um, I bought this Wi-Fi card, and I got two-day shipping on it for twenty-five dollars. And to be honest, the one I got before this was sixty dollars, and it lasted a year, and it was complete. I mean, it, it was terrible. Um, I'm using a NVIDIA 260 GTX video card, which, by the way. Is probably one of the most unsupported video cards out here because it took me literally two weeks to find the, the current extension for this, and it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in my life. I mean, I've done lots of you know reinstalls, reformats, etc., and this is this has got to be the most headache I've ever you know dealt with is finding this video. Um, but uh, as I was stating before, I do have a uh, Intel Core i7. It's a i7-920, and it's clocked at 2.6 gigahertz. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen one more time here. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen here, and I'm going to show you all some stuff that uh, I took when I was building this, this, uh, this PowerPoint here. So as you can tell, these are my screenshots here. And let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Let's go ahead and play this bad boy. So... It might be kind of small, but I do have the system information tab up here. As you can tell, it's uh, a Mac Pro, <laughs> and uh, it's Mac Pro 3.1. Of course, I don't have a Mac. I have a Dell. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
but uh, it's, as you can tell, it's got the i7 2.66 gigahertz. And this is this is kind of an old uh, screenshot that I took, but um, it, at the time I did have 10.7.2. But you know, as I was you know showing you a few minutes ago, we are back up to 10.7.4. All right. So uh, throughout this broadcast, I will be displaying uh, screenshots on the on the uh, on the screen here, just to kind of give you some clarification on what we can do to kind of uh, enhance the the presentation, pretty much. Um, all right. So you're saying, okay. I have everything I need. What do I do next? What we're going to do is we're actually going to, um, you know, just just burn everything to a CD. Everything that you need. You need Windows. You need Mac. Everything. So we're going to we're going to do everything that we can to just go ahead and burn those to a, a DVD or a flash drive. Sorry about that. You know, like I was saying before, the one that I use is iatcos L2, um, and I'll put that here. Let me see. I'll show you how to spell that because it's it's kind of confusing. Iatcos L2. Um, but you know, there's there's many different kinds of Mac OS X86 installers around. You know, there's there's Iatcos. I mean, Tony Mac has a few out. You know, there's there's a bunch of distributions. You know, there's I mean, there's there's a there's just a bunch. You know, Empire EFI. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. The easiest one for me personally to install was this Iatcos. All right, so what's first? What are we going to do? Okay, it's easy. We're going to pop the Mac OS disk in because, I mean, we're going to install Mac first because if not, then Mac is going to, like, be lost. And besides that, we actually have to use what's called the Chameleon Bootloader. And what that does is it, it kind of disguises everything, you know, into thinking, you know, that, that uh, Mac OS X is actually an MBR when in real reality it's GUID. So um, before we we uh, we move on with this, I want to stress to you that you need to open up the disk utility. So you pop your CD in, your DVD in, right? We're going to go into the install, and before we install, go to the top, right? I'll, I'll show you a picture over here in just a few minutes. But we're going to go to the top of the screen, and we're going to look for disk utility. We're actually going to... Uh, partition the hard drive into three separate partitions. So basically all that is, is, um, you know, I mean, we're going to have one for Windows, we're going to have one for Ubuntu, we're going to have one for, uh, you know, Mac OS. So your Mac OS is going to be your first one. Uh, I installed Windows last personally, but I've seen them do it both ways because the way I'm going to show you how to do this, it's pretty much universal. You just have to install Mac OS first. All right. So like I was saying before, let's go ahead and just pop that uh, disk in, and then we're just going to uh, go ahead and uh, just continue that, and we're going to partition. And then we're going to, after after the partition, we're just going to install the Mac OS on the first partition that we used. Now, do keep in mind, sorry, I forgot to mention this, but whenever we're, we're doing these partitions, we're going to need the first one to, to be Mac OS journaled, and we're going to need the other one, the other two, to be FAT32 because Ubuntu will install, or you know Debian for that matter will install, you know Mint, etc. Mint or Ubuntu will install FAT32 uh, partition, and also um, Windows ha uh, can convert the NTFS partition to a FAT32 as well. Um, but do keep in mind that I do encourage you to buy a legal disk. Even if you do download this IATCOS uh, distribution, go ahead and uh, once you get everything set up, go ahead and purchase the uh, 29.99 version of, of Lion off of the App Store. So that way, you know, you, it can't really be considered piracy. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, as I was saying before, it's drastically, drastically important that we, we partition those drives first. You know, as I was stating before, number one, we're going to do um, Mac OS Journal, and the other two are going to be uh, FAT32. It doesn't matter if, if, if you do Windows or... Uh, actually, yeah, I mean, I, I would do Windows last, to be honest. Um, so we're just going to continue the install after that, pretty much. Um, 
as I was stating before, once we open up the uh, disk utility, I'm going to go ahead and show you a picture of this so we know um, what's going on. All right, so um, give me just a second here. All right, so let's go ahead and make this bigger now. All right. All right, so um, as you can see here, this is the disk utility that we were talking about. So once you go along the top of the installation and you click disk utility, this is what you're going to see right here. Right here. Um, I just grabbed a quick image off of image, uh, Google Images. But um, basically what this is, is it's a partition manager. If you've ever used disk utility in either uh, you know, a Debian release or you have used disk utility in Windows 7, I mean, those are all the same. Um, and all this does is it, it partitions everything, which is kind of nice because you know, you don't have to, you know, know any kind of terminal commands to kind of, you know, uh, know what you're doing there. It's, it's, it's an actual GUI or guided user interface to, to show you what's going on, which is, which is really, really helpful. Um, but uh, as I was stating before, we do need uh, the Mac partition. We need that to be Mac OS extended journal. And the Windows 7 is, the uh, format of that is going to be... Um, FAT32, and the Ubuntu is also going to be FAT32 here, all right? All right, I know there's some questions coming in. Um, we'll be getting to those very shortly, I promise. Yeah, one of the things, Chris, if I might just interrupt you, we're not, uh, we're not able to paste links in the YouTube chat. Yeah. So I know that you've mentioned them before, so it's kind of like giving a phone number and address. If you could mention them twice, like uh, Kext is www.kexts.com. Uh, yeah. One of the other links that you gave, uh, uh, Tony Mac X, uh, that was uh, Tony Mac X 86.blogspot.com slash search slash label slash custom AC. I know that's kind of difficult, but uh, we're, we're not able to paste links in the YouTube chat. So if you could just mention them a couple times, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, sure can. Um, I mean, actually, if you just go to the actual uh, tonyx 86com mm -hmm. you can actually have full access to the whole website. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll have full access to not only, you know, the hardware builds, but you can actually go ahead and sign yourself up for a username in the form, which is really nice. And you'll have full access to people who have uh, uh, dealt with the issues that you may be facing whenever you do decide to uh, do this Hackintosh build. All right, so... Um, Chris, I have a question. Yes. So, well, you talked about IATCOS and Chameleon. Um, what are you actually doing the install with? IATCOS or Chameleon? Yes, uh, IATCOS does indeed uh, install Chameleon. Um, okay. Chameleon is actually the bootloader that uh, IATCOS uses. Um, okay. So, a little bit down the road here, maybe I'd, I'd, say, I'd say 10 or 15 minutes from now, I'd say. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into the slide that will show you the actual Chameleon bootloader. And uh, it, it's, it's kind of nice because, you know, later on I'll be mentioning things that you can actually theme this bootloader with, you know, so you don't have that boring black and white uh, bootloader. I don't, I don't know, maybe you, some of you all have uh, seen my stream here recently. Um, I've uploaded some pictures uh, of the actual IATCOS, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the Chameleon uh, bootloader. You know, it's, it's all colorful and nice and stuff, you know, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, basically just, just let uh, Mac OS install from there. It'll install perfectly. Um, it installed perfectly on mine. And after that, you'll see like a little backslash that's kind of like flipping around. And then you'll boot right into uh, Mac OS. And from there, you can start, uh, you know, getting your text in order, you know, getting everything else in order. Um, that, that's for another time, though. Um, so since we have Mac OS installed now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install your Debian release. You know, I know some of you all like Mint. I know, um, I know Yvonne, you use Mint, don't you? And uh, George? Yes, I do. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome, yeah. Um, I myself use Ubuntu because it's familiar to me. Um, I was actually using Ubuntu back... Uh, I think when I first tested it, it was in 7.0. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, but, you know, j just make sure that um, 
know, Mac OS installed properly, and let's go ahead and and uh, head into the, the Debian install. But first, let's go ahead and take some questions from uh, from the YouTube channel. Yeah, Chris. One okay. question. Uh, one question that we had was, uh, can you install Mac OS uh, in, in in VMware? Uh, yes, but it's a tad more complicated than just installing it um, on an actual hard drive itself. <clears throat> okay, George, you got some other questions? Um, actually, um, I, I actually tried to install Hackintosh just probably about two years ago, and. Yep. Uh, Really didn't have a successful time at it. In fact, I just basically wiped the drive and went back to Linux. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, um, I, I never, I, I didn't think multi-booting was possible, especially when I was using Grub. So um, uh, it doesn't seem to like the Mac partitions and, and such. So um, the partition manager you have is that kind of built? That's built into the OS you're using, or did you, it was that a, a third-party thing you had to go find? I'll tell you what, George, I had the worst time with Grub 2. I definitely understand where you're coming from. You know, Grub was a nightmare for me because, I mean, not only was it taking over Chameleon, but it wasn't allowing me, like, I would have an actual uh, menu item in Grub that would say, you know, Mac OS X 32-bit, Mac OS X 64-bit. I would click it, and it would just restart my computer. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is horrible. But um, then I found this little trick, which I'll get into a little bit later, and it's going to work perfectly with Grub. Cool, cool. All right, any other questions, guys? All right. Looking in the looking in the list of uh, questions here, um, uh, of course, uh, one was already asked. Yeah. Nothing, nothing yet, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Cool. One person asked about a resource document with a list of all the needed items and links to what you're using and everything. Uh, is there some way that that can be made available? Uh, yeah, sure can. That's actually the uh, custom Mac. Yeah, it's the one I was I was uh, mentioning earlier. This one right here, the Tony Mac OS X dot com search label custom Mac. Okay. That one there. Um, so um, as, as long as uh, you know, we can gain access to that. Um, I'll go ahead and, and release the uh, the keynotes and the PowerPoint after after the presentation. So that way, you know, I got you all fired up. So that way, you can jump right into it whenever you know you have a chance. And uh, so that way, whenever you know you get ready to in install your Mac OS X, you know who to come to. Tag and copy, right? So exactly. Excellent. All right. So. Um, if there's no other further questions or comments, you know, got any comments in there or um, Let me see. Is there any comments? I'm, I haven't seen any updated comments in there yet, Chris. But um, uh, one thing I was wondering about is uh, um, the bootloader. It's is it, it's a GUI style bootloader, or is it uh, is it strictly text? Is it uh, is it something that you set up from the OS, or is it something that you set up from the uh, from the uh, from the actual bootloader install itself. All right, so yeah, so like whenever you install, uh, like how does it install? I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah, so it installs just. Uh, I mean, it's it's. I'm not gonna say it's like Windows because it's not. Um, whenever you install iatcos, there's options that you can do. Whenever you install iatcos, and those options can be accessed from the advanced button. Whenever you are just about to install it, and from there you can uh, choose whether you want to install either Chimera. Which I mean, you can use that if you want to, or you can install uh, Chameleon. And my recommendation is to install Chameleon because um, you know, here in just a, you know maybe ten or so minutes, we'll we'll get into the actual program that will allow you to streamline uh, Chameleon itself. Okay, sure. Yeah. All right. All right. All right, guys. Cool. Um, thanks for the questions, and th you know, thanks for the comments for sure. Um, now that we're done with the uh, Mac OS uh, Debian install, or sorry, the uh, Mac OS install, sorry, um, let's go ahead and, and jump right into the, the, the uh, Debian install, actually. Um, your Debian install is just like a regular, you know, install, kind of, kind of. Don't go and just install Ubuntu, or don't go and just install Mint, because if you don't hear what I have to say, you're going to completely take over 
uh, chameleon with grub, and it's going to be a disaster. Okay. All right. So make sure make sure that when you're in installing your distribution, to bring up the partition manager whenever you are installing this this uh, Mac OS or this uh, this uh, Debian release, because if not, then it's going to be a disaster. Do not do not do not install alongside Mac OS or erase all. We are looking for the radio button that says something else. That's what it, it, it says, something else on the uh, Ubuntu. Um, and you want to set the Ubuntu partition to Ubuntu, right? Or you want to set the Mint partition to Mint, right? So, um, and after that, I mean, it, it's good to go from there. I mean, it's, it's, it's good to go. But, uh, okay, cool. Uh, I was, you know, Notified here by a, a colleague that it's uh, that button does also exist in Mint as well, which is which is really nice. Um, so I'm just going to give you a, an idea of what we're looking at here when we pull up the uh, the partition manager. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen again. All right. All right. So what we're looking at here is um, this is an older version. Um, it's 10.10, .10, which now we're up to 12. 404 LTS, 12.10 um, is still in beta for Ubuntu, but um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that um, it looks something like this on, on Mint as well, um, but double, double, triple, quadruple check this, okay, that you have the correct partition selected. Do you see this little red button down here, this little red circle? We need to look for this because we're not installing um, grub on the actual SDA drive, we're going to be installing it on the partition itself. So that way um, Chameleon will actually go ahead and, and allow us to install itself on the actual SDA drive, which is the main drive. So double, triple check this. It's definitely something that you need to do because if not, then it will, your Hackintosh will not install it successfully. To kind of you know give you a uh, outlook on that. So what we're going to do is um, instead of it being the actual SDA uh, you know disk drive itself, um, say you install it on SDA three or SDA two. What you're going to do is you're going to actually click that partition, and you're going to click SDA two or SDA three, whatever that that partition may be. You know, so that way it doesn't overwrite Chameleon because it's it's a disaster. Trust me, I've I've been there, done that. It's plenty of times actually. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, just just continue to install Linux after that. You know, your 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 Debian uh, install, and um, and literally, I mean, Windows is a regular install from there. We're going to do the same thing that we did on on Ubuntu, pretty much. All we're going to do is we're just going to convert the FAT32 partition to a uh, NTFS partition. Really easy, really easy to do. And I had some kind of doubts about it, to be honest, but once I installed it, um, I, was, I was so happy because, I mean, it took me forever to get everything to work. And, you know, I, what happened was this, was um, whenever I was installing, you know, Mac OS and, and uh, Ubuntu, I got those installed, and I was like, yeah, all right, sweet. But the next day I woke up, and I was like, hmm, let's, uh, let's go ahead and install Windows, too. So I actually had to wipe out my, my hard drive again <laughs> and uh, start from scratch again. <laughs> but um, I'm really glad that worked for sure. Um, but uh, we're actually just going to, you know, use, use the partition manager and just convert that last FAT32 um, partition to a NTFS partition. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll sh definitely show you a, uh, a way to do that here in just a few minutes. Actually, it's right now. So... I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. My screen. One of the, one of the last times. All right. So as you can see here, I'm pretty sure if you're a network admin or you have um, installed Windows on anybody's machine before, that you definitely know what this looks like. Um, you don't want to click upgrade. You want to click uh, custom, advanced. So that way, whenever you know this this uh, pulls up, you'll be able to see the last partition that's remaining, and that's Windows. 
Um, so that way you can convert that FAT32 over to a um, NTFS file system. You know, wait a second, NTFS. That's yeah. Never mind. <laughs> NTFS because yeah, FS. <laughs> All right, so um, again, this is definitely what it looks like, what we're going to do here. So you'll see that there's a disk zero, and if you come down here, you're going to see all your partitions here. This is just an example. Um, but you're going to click your partition here, which is labeled Windows, and you're just going to go ahead and uh, go to Drive Options, Advanced. And you're just going to just go ahead and just convert it to a uh, NTFS uh, uh, partition. So that way we can install Windows 7 on it. Pretty easy. Probably the easiest part of the, uh, of the install by far, I'd say. All right, so fine-tuning. Um, what we're going to do here is um, we're going to actually boot back into Chameleon. And... I'm going to leave this, this screen share up because this next part is going to be pretty ridiculous. I mean, because I'm not going to be able to tell you these terminal commands and you remember them. So I'm just going to leave this, this, uh, this screen share up if, if that's all right with you all. All right. So um, what we're looking at here is Chameleon would no longer be default because Windows was installed on, uh, as the last OS. So whenever you boot into Windows, it's going to be like, hey, guess what? I'm going to come in and take over your hard drive now because I'm Windows. And it's, it's normal, you know. Um, once you boot it into the Mac OS itself, um, so what you have to do basically is just uh, um, pop your CD in again, you know, the CD that you use to install Mac OS with. All you have to do is just pop that in and um, you actually have to kind of go through, and then when it asks you if you want to install or press F8 to enter the boot selection, press F8. So that way you can uh, choose from all three of your devices. So as I was saying, to all three devices in one bootloader, one was there, right? I'm getting pretty excited. Oh, I am. All right. Here is the terminal commands I was talking about. So after we are in Chameleon, and we are in um, Mac itself. We're actually going to um, go to the terminal within Mac. So if you're using a Windows keyboard like you probably are, um, the easiest way to do that is to hold down the Start button and tap the space bar. That will bring up the kind of like the search function um, or the like the Start button in, in Windows kind of. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, just just type in term, and you'll be able to find the terminal right off. It's it's really easy. Um, so the first command that we're going to type in is disk utility, disk util list, right? And um, that's basically just going to give us a list of everything that is on your hard drive right now. You know, it's it's going to list all your all your partitions. You're going to see everything right here. Find your Mac OS disk on this list and take note of this, please, because if you don't and you set the wrong, um, you set the wrong uh, uh, a bootloader, you're going to be sorry, trust me, because you're going to have to go in and do this again. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you don't want to do this because Terminal is kind of intimidating anyways. I mean, I'm comfortable with Terminal because I've been around Ubuntu for so long, but, I mean, for somebody who is just starting out with, uh, you know, doing this, this, uh, this process, this is the last place you want to be, trust me. Um, but... Uh, to some of you uh, more advanced computers out there, you probably recognize this from Windows, right? Yeah, it's, it's not quite the, uh, the FDisk that we're talking about from Windows. Um, however, uh, it, this is definitely handy to kind of get everything started up here. Um, so we're going to be going into the FDisk commands. Um, so the handy thing about um, Mac OS is once you type in a command, it actually stays in this command until you tell it to exit, which is nice. Um, so we're going to stay in the, the fdisk command the whole time. Um, so we're going to do F, fdisk. I don't know what the E parameter stands for. I can't remember. Um, I, I don't even have any context clues, but uh, it basically just type this in. <laughs> and um, this is slash dev, which is your hard drive. That's what Linux names all their hard drives or Unix names all their hard drives. 
um, slash our disk because that's what you know, Unix names their disks. And mine was zero because I don't have more than one hard drive. Um, I'm pretty sure you, you guys are kind of familiar with this because everything starts at zero. You have to use zero. So say you're say you have like 15 different partitions on your first hard drive, right? And you're like, man, I really don't want to do this on this hard drive. So you do a, a secondary hard drive, right? You would replace the zero with a one, right? It's pretty easy. And if you had like a third hard drive on, you know, um, you would do two, et cetera, et cetera. After we're done doing this command here, the fdisk e slash dev slash rdisk zero, we're going to go to, um, we're just going to type in letter P. Simple P. It's done. <laughs> and then um, we're going to type in the letter F and then X. We're going to type in X. We're going to type in that, um, that partition number from before. And you'll notice that there's a star you know, beside the active one. Um, so basically what you'll be looking at is if you're using a you know, you're using Windows and it's installed on partition three. Mine was the exact same way. There was an asterisk right beside the <coughs> the third partition because that's where that was the active bootloader. And after we type in the F and the partition here, we're gonna type in right. It doesn't have to be capitalized, it can be lowercase or whatever you want it to be. It's not really case sensitive. Um, and then after you type that in, it's it's gonna probably give you an error. It's going to say, like, can't gain exclusive access to this drive. Just say whatever and just tap just tap Y for yes. After that, you'll be able to uh, type in exits. And then after that, you can just press uh, commands if you're using a Mac keyboard, or you can press the start button and Q for queen to exits. All right, so um, I, I know there was a little bit of a stretch there. Um, any more questions come in at all? Uh, not really. I'm trying. To, I'm, I'm cutting and pasting some of your PowerPoint presentation into the chat. A little piece at a time. We're limited in the number of characters, but I think uh, I think we're doing fine. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. I just want to make sure nobody's lost or anything. Um, any questions you all guys have? Nah, I really don't have anything. Actually, I'm just uh, catching up mentally with you, and and of course keeping track of the chat stuff. Okay. Cool. Everything good, Yvonne? Oh, she's muted. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> All right. All righty. So um, now that we have this awesome Mac terminal closed and we restarted our computer, um, what we're going to do is um, we're pretty much done with that whole process. I mean, we've activated the bootloader, you know, to, to the chameleon bootloader. Um, we've done pretty much everything that we can do. So if you restart your computer, I mean, you're going to see something like this, to be honest. You're going to see exactly this. Because if you're using my, my uh, IATCOS I was telling you about, you're going to see exactly this. You're going to see Mac, you're going to see Linux, and you're also going to see Windows and TFS. And it's going to look exactly like this because that's what it looks like by default. Right? So um, it's really nice to use. I mean, uh, I know... Earlier, you were mentioning something about the GUI or the uh, the uh, text bootloader earlier, George. And uh, th this is actually what it looks like, which is I think it looks nice for a bootloader. Really. It's got a nice GUI to it. Yeah, definitely. And um, not to kind of put this one down, but I think this one looks a lot nicer. <laughs> you know, but uh, th that's the current one that I'm using. I actually just uploaded that to Google Plus today, and uh, I got some pretty good feedback about it. You know, and people like it stuff. So. Definitely a good thing. Kind of alien looking. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it's got some, like, uh, sporty type feel to it, kind of. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's that's about the end of it for me for right now. Um, that's, it's a pretty easy process. It's just you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. If you don't, I mean, it's it's going to be a nightmare for you. You know, definitely heed all the suggestions that, that I portrayed in this. Uh, okay, there we go. I'm good. Uh, I portrayed it in this in this video, so that way you can kind of get it the first time, and not for two weeks like I did, because my main issue was um, 
was as George mentioned earlier, the 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 grub bootloader. That was, dude, that 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 was killing me honestly. Like, I don't know how many times I was, I just wanted to throw my computer out the window because grub would take over everything. But then I found this little minuscule little thing on a uh, on a walkthrough, and I was like, God, look at that. But um, everything's good. So um, that's it for this presentation. Um, feel free to join me next time, definitely, because I'm going to be giving some post-installation help. So um, once we get all that that Mac OS installed and we get everything the way we want it, we got some settings changed here and there. I'm going to give you some interesting tools that we can use to kind of. Uh, Put everything together. You know, we, we have just a few little programs I can show you, and um, I can you know discuss how to do the updates. You know, how to do different settings arrangements because I know coming from a you know a um, a Windows environment can be kind of you know intimidating whenever you're doing this, this, this whole this whole thing because I know when I first started using a, a Mac, I was like, wow, this is this is rough. I'm, I don't know if I'm be able to learn this. But um, I mean, I've I've learned it pretty well, and I mean, I, I can do this stuff in my sleep now. So it's it's definitely a good thing. Um, any questions, comments, concerns? I don't see any more questions here. I I do want to say, Chris, what an awesome job! You know, obviously this is not for the faint-hearted, but with your instructions and some of the links and uh, in this presentation, I think it's easy for somebody to uh, to think about tackling that. So, uh, anyway, as we wrap things up for this uh, first live tech and coffee uh, hangout on air, and what a great way to, it is to inaugurate that. Uh, any comments from you, Yvonne or George, as we wrap things up? I just want to um, say I, I actually to um, this together. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Avon. Ladies before gentlemen, okay. right? Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to thank Chris for putting this together. I think I under have a better understanding of how I can myself do a triple boot. Now I have a double. Um, it would be great to be able to use the Macintosh OS as well. Properly purchased. <laughs> that is great. Okay, anything from you, George, uh, as we uh, wrap it up? Yeah, it looks George like George is having to come back in. <coughs> it kind of looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That guy was not perfect, you know. So, yeah. George, you got any? Chris will uh, come back and uh, and um, and show us basically uh, in detail how to uh, how to install programs and other things and, and whatever because I'm not too familiar with Mac anymore. It's, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, I can definitely do that for you for sure. Um, there are a couple little things that uh, I didn't mention in this presentation for you know on purpose so that way you all could you know come back and get the full experience of the whole. The whole thing, because I'm sure if I did this in one presentation, we'd be here all night. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want people to be here, you know, all night. You know, some people have to go to sleep. You know, that kind of stuff. Work the next day. And I just want to, you know, make everything as quick and concise as, as possible. Yeah, but just think, if they're geeks, what kind of dreams are they going to have, right, Chris? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be dreaming ones and O's. Well, listen, yeah. I want to thank everybody for joining us for this first live hangout. Thanks again, Chris, for making it such, making it such a great success, and George and Yvonne. And uh, don't forget, if you want to find out more about Tech and Coffee, go to techandcoffee.info. Lots of information there. George, anything you want to add about Tech and Coffee before we wrap it up? Um, no, they, we're just a. Uh, a good online community. Um, uh, we do uh, hangouts and basically a bunch of telecommuters who sit around and uh, and try to keep their wits about them. And, and you know, I'm not sure what we do. What do we do? <laughs> well, I think we're we're all that, as the young people would say, and more. So anyway, thanks for joining us for this live hangout. I encourage you to join us next time for more interesting news, tips, and tricks, and how-tos. And uh, thanks for joining us for Tech and Coffee. Take care. Have a great evening. Yeah.